G'day Ziggy D here and I am here with Wyatt Cheng today, Senior Technical Developer on uh, Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls. So for my viewers who are not very familiar with your position at Diablo and what exactly is that you do, would you mind sort of just explaining for them? Uh, yeah, in a nutshell, there's four major disciplines in game development, production, art, programming, and design. And design is responsible for defining you know, the behaviors that exist in between the art and the programming. It's essentially how things actually function. It's like right. the functionality point of view of the right. game. Uh, this BlizzCon, we had, uh, we had you know, no new expansion pack announced, but you guys are still putting out a lot of content. Like, uh, we've got a whole new zone, we've got new monsters, we've got tons of new legendaries coming up, even new goblins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I'm kind of wondering, like, um, are you guys, do you guys have like a particular vision you're trying to reach in preparation for the next expansion pack? Like, it's a particular sort of gameplay set of like, this is how what's in the game now, and now we're ready to expand. You know, right now we're focused on just looking at what the game needs and adding more content. Yeah. You know, and I think that the stuff we've brought to BlizzCon this year really reflects that. I mean, it's like you said, you know, what would make the game more fun to play? New treasure goblins. You know, what else would make the, new, the game more fun to play? You know, more legendary items, you know, Always. season two. So, um, you know, I, I'm thinking mostly in terms of what would make the game better right now and, and rolling that out. Um, I'm most excited about um, season two. Yep. You know, a new set of conquests. Um, I love seasons. I'm a huge fan of seasonal play, and I'm so glad that season one was received so warmly and well. Um, and I think season two is going to be even better. Hmm. Uh, on that topic, what have you guys kind of learned from season one? There were a few little bumps in there. There is a few, but honestly, um, I think uh, it's been good. I mean, we learned that we don't want to have conquests that focus on experience grinding. Yeah. So. Um, we don't have the conquest to get to level 70 coming back. Instead, we we don't expect every player to get every conquest. In fact, ideally, different players would get different conquests, basically the conquests that appeal to them. You know, sometimes we have you know adventure mode and we have rifts and we have greater rifts, but it's really fun to play the game in different ways and to have different goals. So. Um, we're changing some of the conquests to be... Uh, have you seen some of the conquests? You know, one of them that I think this was... I'm kind of curious to see how this one works out. Is a conquest to pick up 50 million gold in a row. <laughs> you know when you pick up gold, you have a little yeah. gold counter in the bottom right-hand corner. And it was just... We were just sitting around the office and someone was like, Man, I really like that... Not making that number really big. And I'm like, you know what? That number doesn't do anything, right? Like, like it's just it's just it's supposed to tell you how much gold you have. Yeah. Like, yeah, but I don't know. I just kind of play this mini game, especially if you have Boon of the Hoarder, right? Mm -hmm. You're like, I just like, you know, making sure I pick up gold every one and a half seconds so I can keep that streak going. And we're like, you know, <laughs> that could be an interesting conquest where we just kind of play that out. I quite like that, that, yeah. It's, it's just this little kind of for fun feature that people do anyway, but now they're going to have to really like push themselves into yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, um, one of the philosophy discussions that we have is when should something be a conquest and when should it be a leaderboard? Yeah. Um, and it's a little bit subtle, but we really felt this should be a conquest because this is not something that you're supposed to do over and over and over forever. Yeah. And we really like the idea that you say, hey, how do I pick up 50 million gold? Great, I did it. Okay. You know, that was fun, but I'm going to go and do something else It's now. not trying to reach a high score. You're which not means... trying to reach a higher yeah. and higher gold, you know, arbitrary gold number. Because yeah. that might actually, again, in the same way we don't want people experience grinding, we don't want people feeling compelled to, to do something extremely repetitive for an entire season. Yeah, especially if it was gold. There's probably going to be people that work out like, this is the best way to get this 50 million. Right, right. Yeah. Once people figure it out, you do it once, you say, okay, that was fun. Uh, back to your regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So, uh, I'm a bit worried about this. I'm no worry. I'm a bit interested in this new zone. Worried was not the correct term. That's fine. You're interested in it. <laughs> I'm interested in this new zone, but I'm wondering was the thing with the W word I was going to throw out there. Where this came from, I know that it's a zone that's based on classic Diablo 2 like, scene. Uh, but was this like something you guys had kind of in development in the background and you've now been able to bring it forwards, or was it just a completely new thing? You no, this is a completely new thing. Wow. This is like. We love Diablo, and the development team loves Diablo, and we want to keep working on it, and we want to keep adding stuff to it. What would be cool? 
and we look at it. And you know, um, adventure mode. People, I don't know if, if if people really think about it, but adventure mode and riffs is what makes any of this possible, because we're not integrating the new area into story mode. Yeah. Because we're not gonna you know change the existing storyline, and we're not introducing a whole new act. Honestly, the ruins of Seshron isn't large enough to warrant being a whole act of its own. Yeah. What adventure mode and the rifts allows us to do is we can say, hey, um, open up your act three waypoint menu and boop, there's a new waypoint. You know, yeah. it's not a whole new act. Um, it's not integrated into the story. It's just a new environment with its own setting. It's got a nice strong setting, new monsters. Um, hey, I'm doing a rift. Oh, great. Oh, hey, what's this new tile site? In the same way that in 2.1 we added the cesspools, yeah. we were like, hey, I really like it when I'm doing a rift and a new tile set shows up. That's cool. It's nice to be in different environments. That's what the Ruins of Seshiron is. I remember you guys in the past talking about how like rifts and everything are out of canon. They're like kind of this like crazy, you know, supernatural sort of thing. Um, so on that topic of bringing in like new zones and stuff, mm -hmm. have you guys thought about doing uh, something a little bit crazier? I heard a suggestion on the forums one time that was, what if we ride the catapult siege engine thing <laughs> rather than it being a zone we run through? What if you're riding it and it stops attacking you? Like, have you thought about doing anything crazier? You know, um, we always have all sorts of suggestions that come up. I don't know if I've heard that particular one, <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know, maybe. Um, <laughs> Uh, as it stands now, rifts really allow us a lot of flexibility. You know, when I look towards the future for Diablo, um, rifts is a great um, infrastructure, right? That yeah. which we can, guess what? Anytime we want, we can add a new monster. Yeah. Anytime we want, we can add a new new tile set. It's giving you guys a lot of freedom yeah. that you didn't have before. If we wanted to add a new gameplay type, we could. If we wanted to add a new shrine or conduit, or um, Adventure Mode is also a great platform. If we wanted to do another Battering Ram type event, maybe that becomes a new bounty, right? Where I go out to this bounty and this is, maybe it's a waypoint created just for this event. We can do that now yeah. because it's a very open-ended framework that we can basically come up and grab great, great ideas. And when people suggest interesting ideas that would normally be hard to fit into a story, we can just say, oh, we don't have to fit in this story. We just drop a waypoint into the waypoint map, and we can go and visit it. So um, there's a, a lot of ideas. We always want more ideas, and then we kind of evaluate what would probably make the game. Share best. those crazy ideas, guys. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've enjoyed reading some of those as well. And I have to say, like the whole like rifts and adventure mode is uh, kind of putting the sandbox in what I always felt was a sandbox genre. Action RPGs to me feel like a sandbox <laughs> genre. It's about finding your own fun. You know, I love farming like this. I love farming for this other item, and that's. I think uh, this new mode has ca really captured that spirit. So that's not a question. I'm just yeah. Well, you know, it's <laughs> funny that you're you know we're, we're talking about like players finding their own fun, and I think that that is sort of a, a very special experience that I think a lot of players experience in season one is is you you have your non seasonal character and you're you're wearing your full set and and you're thinking man I can't wait to play seasons I'm gonna roll a demon hunter and I'm gonna get my my Marauder set, right? But then on the way, you find some other item, right? You, you didn't get your six-piece Marauders right away. Maybe you um, picked up something that made, you know, Donetta's just happens to be a, a set that dropped for you first. I love the Donetta's play. Right? So, so I, I, I do too. And so, so what happens is you're like, oh, well, I guess I'm gonna make my own way, right? You, you create your own builds based on the items that dropped for you. And even though a lot of players eventually end up at the same destination, everyone takes their own path to get there. And it's another and chance to take a different path. It is. Taken. And yeah. then you, you do a build that you haven't done before. Um, I had um, someone yesterday tell me that they run uh, Ray Cores on their Barbarian with a Furious Charge with Immortal Kings. And I'm like, oh, well, that's not common. And they're like, yeah, but that's what I have because I don't have the belt yet. And <laughs> I want to get the, it. <laughs> yeah, and, and you, you put together what you have and make it work. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. I, that's something I really noticed has uh, increased with Reaper of Souls. So it's been really good yeah, cool to say and that. Yeah, I think that's like a, 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 one of the great things about seasons is it really emphasizes, you know, a lot of times the journey is more important than the, the destination. Yeah, that's and, it. And I think Seasons really embraces that, that idea. Awesome. So, on the topic of greater rifts, 
Uh, this I felt added in a real challenge for the game that wasn't there before. It added a, you know, action RPGs have always struggled with the idea of purpose. Like, the purpose is kind of just to get gear to get better gear. That's like the fun of it. And that's what we do. We enjoy the process. That's fun. But this actually adds kind of an extra purpose there now because there's this, you know, people trying to get past 50 and it's very difficult greater with 50. Right. So it's added this real challenge to the game. Have you guys thought about like, uh, oh, how do you like this kind of like addition of challenge to the game and this purpose and have it is something you want to expand upon in other areas? Yeah. Um, uh, so I'll start by saying that I love that people are really into the greater rifts and competing and getting to 50 or getting 51. There's actually an element that I feel is a little bit underserved, and that's the people who aren't necessarily on the leaderboard. I mean, we have thousands, hundreds of thousands of people taking part and playing the game um, on, on every season in, in any area, and, and they're not going to be on the leaderboard. You know, 99% of the players aren't on the leaderboard. But what, what I do want to emphasize is your personal best, you know? And right now we tell you when you beat your personal best, but I feel like we don't celebrate that enough. Yeah. You know, I want to take a, a lesson from um, marathon runners or, or weightlifting, right? I mean, I can watch, you know, the world's strongest man competition on TV, <laughs> but if I go to the gym, I'm happy if I beat my personal best. You know, I feel like that's an accomplishment. I've heard feedback from some people that are like, oh, I'm never gonna be in the top thousand. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make that shouldn't make the game any less fun for you. You know, people who run know they're not going to the Olympics, but it's really, really satisfying when you know all the serious runners, hobbyist runners, right, know what their personal best is and they're just striving to beat themselves. Yep. And I really want to try and make Greater Rifts feel more like that. Hmm. I really want to remind people that, don't worry about those guys who are at 50. What's your best? Oh, I was talking to one of our, our user interface artists. He came into the office one day. He's like, Wyatt, guess what? I'm so happy. Like, what? What happened? My son and I, in two player, we got to Rift 18. Yes. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> awesome. You got to 18. And I, you know, I, I was genuinely happy for him because I know even though Sometimes we fixate on what the highest end is doing. The mm. truth is, there's tons of people who are just gearing up, finding their own way with their items, making it work, doing their own builds, and, and progressing farther. So, so I, I'd love to emphasize that, that more for Greater Rifts. Do you have um, any ideas of how you might be able to help people celebrate achieving a new personal Well, Well, um, yeah, I mean, to start, um, I don't think we're just going to dump a bunch of chat messages into the chat log. I mean, that's kind of what happens now. Yeah. Hey, congratulations, you got a new personal best. Let's dump it in the chat log that scrolls by with, <laughs> with clan chat. Yeah. So I think that we, we want to be able to, to, to just, even, even when, I, when I achieve a new personal best, there should be a little bit of a celebration there. Hmm. Or maybe... A gold explosion party. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily want you to feel like, um, I, I don't think we tie an actual material reward to it, because mm. um, sometimes you only beat your personal best by one second, I wouldn't want people to game or exploit it. I think it's just satisfying, you know, if the game acknowledged. People like better. explosions. <laughs> people do like explosions. People happen to like, hey, guess what? Boon of the Hoarder explodes gold. Oh, guess what? You know, the, the new, uh, did you see the blood shard goblin? That we yes, made? yes. Yeah, right? He's like, oh, you kill the blood shard goblin. An explosion of blood Sorry. shards. And the audience during the panel yesterday, when we played the video of killing a blood shard goblin, and those blood shards hit the ground, and you could just feel everyone was like, that is awesome. <laughs> it's even better because, you know, he stole the blood shards from Kadar in That's the first right. place. And she right. is such a scam artist. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so on the topic of goblins, since you brought it up, uh, do you guys, it's, you hinted at adding more. You have some ideas of what you might want to expand out into yes. adding other ones? Yes, there were hints. There were hints. Yes, mm. we're, we're keeping, uh, mm. keeping tight lid on that one. Ah, oh, damn. <laughs> Blizzard and their secrets. That's right. <laughs> We've got, uh, this is kind of a sadder topic for me, I guess. Okay. We had the removal of the crafting components uh, oh, quite a while back now. Right. I was really, uh, I was really fond of that idea of uh, adding that kind of extra meta game because that's what it was for me. Yeah. It was like an no, extra collector's like meta game. But uh, I think the the problem with it, if I'm correct here, is that uh, it it pushed the time back when you would actually get those legendaries and when they'd be accessible to. Um, 
went beyond when they were useful. Like you would have a bunch of other legendaries when oh. you could have got them. That's kind of what, what um, I got from it. No, that wasn't really. I mean, I think that's totally fair. Mm -hmm. um, that was that was a reason. It wasn't yeah. the number one reason. Okay. Um, the number one reason is one of the filters that we kind of use to evaluate whether or not um, we want to keep a certain gameplay style is whether it drives the player to create lots and lots of games. Because mm. what was happening is the best way to farm these materials yeah. was create a game, check to see if there's a bounty, if it's there, go, if it's not, quit, remake the game, remake the game, remake the game. Sometimes you're making four or five, six games an hour, I mean a minute, yeah. right, to <laughs> farm, to get the bounty that you want. Yeah. Um, and whenever we see that, we think, you know, what's the most fun thing in the game? Not Killing monsters, <laughs> yeah, not being in a UI menu. <laughs> yeah. Whatever your answer is for the most fun thing in the game, it's not navigating UI menus. <laughs> yes. So um, ultimately that's why it was removed. That makes now, sense. the reason it was added, we still believe in. I mean, the reason it was added is just, you know, creating this, like you were saying, this sense of collecting pieces to put together to make something awesome, yeah. right? The fantasy that as I travel the world, I can gather these components and put them together to improve my character in some way. So um, the intent was completely something that we want to continue to explore someday, mm -hmm. but the mechanism just yeah. led to that kind of game, UI menu gameplay yeah. that, that we don't need. I mean, <laughs> that, that's what the auction house was too. I mean, that was mm -hmm. not fun. People were spending more time in UI than they were in the game. Okay. When we see that, we're gonna we're gonna try and you know smooth that out. Yeah, so it might be a concept you pull forwards in the future with another system that doesn't have that menu. Maybe. Gameplay. I mean, uh, right now, um, you know, we were working hard on, on Season 2 and Rifts and Legendaries, but it's always in the back of our mind that if we could come up with a really good way to sort of like... You know, I'd say the closest right now is like the Hellfire Amulet. Yeah. Right? Where I'm not flipping games to try and get the components. It's like, here's how you get... Each yeah, it's of a the bit organs, of a you do it, you feel like you're making progress towards mm. it. At the end, there's a big fight, you know, you're killing, you know, a boss fight, and then you get your amulet. So I think if we could move more in that direction with with some of these systems, that'd be great. That's awesome to hear, because I'm uh, I hope to see some cool stuff like that. Some yeah. nice in-depth stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Awesome. It'll be interesting to see how that shapes up. Hmm. It will be. So uh, I guess one last kind of a bit of a more fun question. Sure. <laughs> Was um, so we we've had we've had greet and greed. We've had yeah. uh, recently shown on the floor the uh, well on the uh, the big stands the uh, rat king. The rat king. The rat king. And these that things are uh, I, I mean no offense, and I think maybe the artist will take this as a compliment, but vomit inducing. I <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. So is there? A, I want, this is what I want to know. Is there like some sort of internal design competition to try and make each other sick? And like, cause one person on stage could barely even look at it. I know that <laughs> was me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I I I can't stand looking at the Rat King. It gives me, gives uh, me chills. Yeah. It makes my skin crawl. Um, yeah. You know the artists. They um, at the end of the day, this is like it's a dark gothic game, yeah. right? Um, that was one of the driving forces on the creative side for Reaper of Souls, was to try and return to that dark fantasy. And um, I, I don't, I, I, I think that, yeah, um, I don't know if it's a competition, <laughs> but our artists um, constantly surprise me with their ability to just put up a piece of art and make me have to look away. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's just, yeah. I, I can't even imagine what the next thing is gonna be after yeah. that. But I mean, but I mean, all the more reason to kill them, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> get off my screen. At the end of the but day. But then there's the kill animation as well. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> So that was great. Thank you so much for taking the time. Dad. Anytime. Thank you for um, being such a great member of the community and helping the players. Thank and you. <laughs> making your videos. I love them. I have to say, it's like such a like such an exciting thing for me to come here and talk to you because Diablo was like what kickstarted my career. It's the reason I'm here now in the first place. So thank you for being yeah, a part of keep that. Keep up the good work. Thank you. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm very flawed that you recognized me as well. That's well, um, I recognized your voice before I recognized your your face. I don't because uh, I don't think you're always on screen. Accent. Well, yeah. also, I mean, I listened to, um, I watched some of your, your guide videos hmm. that you've made. Wow, that's you awesome. You made some good guides. Thank you.